This is the Razer Blade 17 2022 edition, and while this thing is packed with high-end specs that allow you to do incredible things on the go, it's also a bit confusing as to what it's trying to do, and who it's ultimately for. Is it for the gamer, the creator, the student, a mix of those, or someone else? Interestingly, some of its strengths are a contradiction, so while it may not be the right fit for everyone, it's definitely a fantastic fit for some. So let's take a look at the Razer Blade 17 2022 edition and find out if this is or isn't the laptop for you, and if it is for you, this is YouTube, so there are always links in the description to pick it up. First, let's take a look at what's powering this thing on the inside. We have a 12th gen 14 core Intel Core i7 12800H processor, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 Ti GPU with 8GB of VRAM and a max TGP of 150 watts, which is in line with other gaming laptops that are pushing their 30 Ti's to the max, so it's good that it's not limited here. Now, if you don't know what TGP is, I had to learn a bit more about this myself recently. It stands for Total Graphics Power. It's another layer of things that you'll want to consider with a laptop GPU because not every 3070 Ti is the same. A laptop running at a lower TGP won't perform as powerfully as one that's running at a max 150 watts of TGP. Frustrating, I know. You also have one terabyte of SSD storage and 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. Now you can easily upgrade these unlike some other company out there. And if you do, you can upgrade up to four terabytes of storage, and it even has an open M.2 slot if that suits your fancy. On the other hand, Apple not making their computers as upgradable allows them to be thinner and more efficient. Finally, you have an 82 watt hour battery, which is below the 100 watt hour legal limit for a plane. So it would have been nice to have that extra juice, especially with how much power this thing draws, but more on that later. But hey, at least you get a fan for your battery to go along with the other fans to cool the laptop. On the outside, you have this really sleek matte black aluminum chassis and blocky design that honestly reminds me a a lot of those old school chunky 17 inch MacBook Pros. It has a massive just over six pound presence and will surely take up a lot of space on your desk. Also, it's thicker than it looks in photos. In fact, it's thicker than the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So if you already have back pain, this may be a bit unwieldy for travel or on the go. If you're the type of person that hates seeing frame prints all over your laptop, unfortunately with the black matte finish, you'll see them everywhere. You'll have to constantly clean it with a microfiber cloth to keep it looking clean. And I've noticed a few scuffs on the finish already, so that's a bummer. So you might want to put a skin on this if that would bother you. And there's a link for this one from dbrand in the description. Along the side of the device, you get a lot of options for ports that makes it great for creatives or live streamers. I personally love the SD card slot and HDMI port the most. The main charging port uses Razer's proprietary plug and the charging brick does feel a bit big to lug around. It's quite a bit bigger than the 16 inch MacBook Pro power brick, but it provides twice the amount of power. The power cable is nicely braided and you even have a little rubber strap to keep things at least somewhat easy to contain. If you happen to forget the charging brick, you can also charge over USB-C, but keep in mind it only works on the left Thunderbolt 4 USB-C port that's located on the charging port side. Oh, and there's a little LED light along the front edge so you can see where it's charging and its battery status. It's always nice to see this on a laptop. Now for opening it up, it does pass a one-handed test because this whole thing is so heavy to begin with, but the little cutout for your finger isn't super big, so you really have to get in there. I do find that the screen does wiggle a bit, which is a bit concerning, but it's honestly the only area they have a concern regarding the build quality. The keyboard is extremely low profile and nice to type on, but if you really like to have a lot of travel on your keys, kind of like on a mechanical keyboard more than an Apple keyboard, then this may not be your taste. It's also a bit problematic for some games, but I'll talk about that in just a moment. Also, it's Razer, so each key is individually lit with RGB lighting that you can customize within the Razer Chroma app. Right now I have it set to move based on the audio that's playing, so that's really fun. And then the trackpad I think is up there for a Windows laptop. But it's still really hard to deny that the trackpads on MacBooks are really quite phenomenal and feel great. Instead of that crazy tech that fakes a click on the MacBooks, this one is a tactile, squishy wedge design. That means that the top part you can't click in, but the bottom part you can definitely push in a lot. And you can kind of feel the edge of the body when you press it in, and it can kind of feel a little bit kind of sharp to the touch, so I don't really like that. This does come with a 1080p webcam, for all those video calls that we're making. This is what it looks like. How do you think it looks and sounds? And here's a photo that was taken from it. What do you think? I know these built-in cameras and mics are what many of us are using a lot more nowadays, so this is important, but the quality is not all that amazing, so they're just great for when you're on the go and just need something. However, if you're planning to dock this laptop at home or at the office and use an external monitor with it, you probably want to get a really great upgrade for your video and sound, so the B600 video bar from this video sponsor, Anchorwork, is a great option to do just 
it's that. Now this is more than just a webcam. It's a four in one design that offers a light to get a better looking, well exposed and more crisp looking image. You add in the 2K resolution camera that has a low distortion, wide angle lens and their magic sight technology, you end up with a great looking image that is bright and professional looking. It has smart technology built in to make sure that you're in frame and in focus. But video is more than just the way things look, but how they sound. The camera has dual speakers built into it if you need a speaker and a four mic array with Anchorworks voice radar technology for noise cancellation and vocal pickup. That means whenever you're talking, others hear your voice and not the environment around you. What's great is that you get all of that in one device instead of having to juggle multiple devices that take up all your ports. It's easy to set up. You just plug it in, install the software, and you're good to go. If you want to learn more about the Anchorwork B600 video bar or even their smaller $59.99 C200 webcam that has great performance, 2K resolution, noise reduction, and light capture function, there are links down below in the description. It definitely helps support the channel and thanks to Anchorwork for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now along with the camera comes an IR sensor making it compatible with Windows Hello. So it's really easy to log into your device just by opening the lid and looking at it. I love this feature and wish it was on all computers, especially ones that use a notch. You have all that room right there. So what are you doing, Apple? Now as a professional audio engineer of over 15 years, I care about sound. What's convenient about this laptop being so big is how wide the speaker placement is because it's located on each side of the keyboard. That means that you have a better stereo spread and the way that they've processed the sound here definitely helps add to that. You see, this has THX spatial audio in it. And if you didn't know, Razer owns THX. Well, this spatial audio is interesting. It's not a make or break type feature, but it can make it seem like the audio is even wider. So let's listen to a sample comparing the two different settings. Can you hear the difference? It's a bit subtle. Now here's my observation. THX spatial audio makes sense when you're using this kind of like a Bluetooth speaker playing some music or podcasts on your desk while you're doing things around the room. And this can definitely consistently hit 75 to 80 decibels. But when you're listening to things on your laptop with headphones, well, I would turn this feature off. I personally don't like the way it sounds, especially in games. The processing of the audio makes things sound hollow rather than in your face with presence and intensity because it's trying to fake a wider sound stage. which is less than the ideal in games like Apex Legends. Thankfully, you can turn it off. Now, you've probably noticed in earlier samples that these aren't exactly bassy sounding speakers, and that's quite true. It's fine and gets plenty loud, but it's hard to deny how dang good the speakers sound on the new MacBook Pros. The THX app does give you a parametric EQ as well as some EQ presets, but I noticed that the bands only go down to 250 hertz. But if you plug in your headphones, you can go all the way down to 31 hertz, so that's good. That means that you can customize a wider frequency range of sound when you're using headphones, of course, depending on what kind of headphones you use, but this kind of makes me believe that the speakers actually cannot go below or much lower than 250 hertz, which explains why it's not super bassy. Now we got to talk about the display because, well, it's awesome. It's a 17.3 inch G-Sync compatible panel with a fairly slim 6 millimeter bezel, so that's really nice. It's individually factory calibrated and covers 100% of the DCI-P3 color space, which means that this is capable of displaying colors accurately for graphic design, but especially for video. Perfect for content creators. It also has a matte finish to prevent glare, but it's not as contrasty as glossier screens, so that is a trade-off. But even with the matte finish, it looks great. Viewing angles are also good without much color distortion. Obviously, OLED, QD OLED, or Mini LED would have been more amazing, but this thing is already over $3,000, so we gotta chill out a little bit and make some compromises. But here's the best way I can describe it. Within the first 10 or 15 minutes of my videographer using this laptop, he said, man, this is such a nice display, and he's really nerdy about technical image quality. And now for the star of the show, this insanely smooth 240 hertz refresh rate. Holy cow, is this insane to use while gaming. I've never seen Apex move that smoothly and the difference between my 180 hertz monitor and this 240 hertz is seriously dramatic. I freaking love gaming on this thing. <laughs> but speaking of, for the gamers out there, you can easily game on Apex Legends on completely max out settings and you'll consistently move between 100 and 150 frames per second, which is really great. Back to the keyboard real quick. Apex Legends has a sprint, slide, and jump mechanic that benefits from mechanical keyboard where you can hit the control key with your palm. But the keyboard as shallow as this, it's really clunky to pull out this mechanic easily, smoothly, and consistently. Depending on the types of games you're playing, you may need to bring another keyboard and mouse with you for gaming on the go, and that's just a lot of extra stuff to take with you. Now for something a bit more standard and highly demanding, the Cyberpunk 2077 benchmark revealed a lot. I found that the highest setting possible and DLSS on quality resulted in an average FPS of 38. Not great, but also Cyberpunk is really demanding. You can get a 75 frames per second average if you max out every single quality setting and have DLSS on 
ultra performance. The downside is I don't really think the setting looks particularly great, but DLSS performance is a good in-between. To reach a target of an average of 60 frames per second, you'll have to choose DLSS performance and then set everything to medium or high when there's no medium option. With this change, I was able to get an average of 65 frames per second and the graphics still look great. What's especially interesting is that performance is great when you're plugged into power, but the moment you unplug it from power, you get an average of 10 to 15 frames per second, which is just not great. And that certainly makes this computer a bit more confusing. But before that, let's talk about content creation. It's clear that Razer has designed this not only to handle gaming extremely well, but also content creation because they focus on and advertise color accuracy and calibration. And I can confidently say that this crushes it for content creation. You can see the PJ Bent scores on the screen, but the long and short of it is that 4K video products on DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Premiere run fast and smoothly without any major notable slowdowns or issues. Photoshop works fantastically as well. Keep in mind though that these scores are great because the laptop is plugged into power. If you're planning to edit a video or photos while in an Uber or a flight without a power plug, it's not going to give you the performance or better life that you're expecting, and better life off the plug is not great with about 3 hours of typical use and less if you're pushing it really hard. Now while pushing these computers hard, it is important to know that it does get a bit toasty to the touch in the top middle part of the keyboard. It can reach about 112 degrees Fahrenheit, so it might get a little bit uncomfortable for some people and if you happen to need to type in that area. The fans also ramp up when you push it, going to about 55 to 60 decibels, which isn't technically super loud, but it's definitely noticeable. It'll come through on something like a zoom call without noise suppression or your comms while in a game. So if you're that dude or do that that plays games at a coffee shop, you'll probably draw some attention. But you do have some control over the fans with a few performance modes that you can choose from, including a silent mode when you want to keep the fan noise low or a custom setting. So you know how I mentioned how this laptop is a bit confusing if not contradicting at times? It's because it took me a while to figure out whose this is for. Ultimately, my goal for reviews is simply to provide you with some points to consider, good or bad, and to help you determine which ones matter to you or don't matter to you. What might not make sense for me or another person might make sense for you. So let's talk about some things to consider, starting with things that might disqualify it for you. You can't run Final Cut on here, so if that's your main video editing software, this is a no-go. If you're someone who needs a laptop that you can use to work and edit on the go or while traveling, for example, while on a flight, then this may not be the device for you because you can't get all that performance you need out of it unless you're plugged into power and the battery life is rough. Performance and battery life are pretty big deals for a content creator on the go. And I know that may bother some of you, but the MacBook Pro seemed like a much better option for power and battery life off the charger for a creative, especially with Apple Silicon. If you really don't like big and heavy laptops, this is not a good fit for you either. If you're the type of person that has the luxury of having multiple computers and you're not planning on gaming while traveling, then it makes more sense to go with a MacBook Pro for your on-the-go device. The Razer Blade 17 can still be the gaming device that you use at home if you don't want or don't prefer a full-on desktop rig. So who is this for? Well, if content creation on the go isn't critical for you, any value or need to game, this one is a great choice assuming you have power. If you're the type of person where gaming is essential to you and content creation is either out of the picture or an occasional thing, this might make sense, especially if you're okay only doing those things while tethered down to power. This is a great all-in-one option as long as you can get around that one factor because Windows gaming and creator laptops are pretty dang power hungry right now. Do you know how this really fits a student? If you game a lot, you're in school, and you can't afford to have a desktop PC and a laptop, you can use this one as your main and only computer. Easy to plug it into your monitor, keyboard, mouse, and power in your dorm, and use it for homework, projects, gaming, and whatever. Then take it to class and it handles documents and whatever else fine for a few hours off the plug. And if you need to travel, you still have everything with you, just in different capacities depending on what you're trying to do. It also doesn't take up as much space as a full-on desktop computer, so that's nice. But those are just my thoughts. I'd love to know yours in the comments and in the This Is Tech Today community Discord chat server. And if you want to pick up the Razer Blade 17 2022 edition, this is YouTube, so the links are always in the description or right here. And let me know what you think of these laptop reviews. It's a bit new for the channel, so I'd love to see if you want more of them, your thoughts, and what you'd like to see. Full disclosure, Razer did lend it this unit to me for review. I don't get to keep it, bummer. And they have no editorial control or influence over this review. They're seeing it for the first time alongside you. Thanks for watching This Is Tech Today. Until next time.